Hi there friends and welcome to my beginner's guide for Curious Expedition 2. I'm Icon and in this video I'm going to introduce to you everything you need to know to enjoy this game. I'm going to explain the basic gameplay loop, I'm going to cover up all the functionalities of the game and give you a basic impression what you need to know to get the ball rolling and discover everything on your own from there on. At least I hope that will work like that. So before we can get started, let's talk about the game first. Curious Expedition puts you into the uh, leadership of a expedition in the late 19th century and the gameplay is based around you sailing around the world, discovering islands, exploring these places, living through adventures and plundering these places, going for going to natives and all the good things that you know of adventure movies from the late 20th century. So overall, the gameplay is really cool and it takes place in the expedition window, which we see right now, and it also takes place in the in Paris, where we do plan the expeditions and all these things. I decided to start out right direct at the expedition mode because this makes up like 75 to 80 percent of your gameplay. So before we get started, let's explain what we see here. This uh, purple spiral here is really important. This is the sanity of your group. Walking around the island costs you sanity. As you see here, while I'm moving my cursor, the different costs get displayed there for a single trip. And once the sanity hits zero, well, then then is the time for bad things to happen. You get a percentile chance for really bad events. So overall, your goal is to keep your is to keep your sanity above zero while you're exploring this place. Of course, you should try to keep your people alive too, but this is basically your, your stamina meter. You can recover sanity by sleeping somewhere on the island or using provisions. When we click here into the Manage Track area, we see everything we have on our provisions right now. So we got a couple of items, but mentioning worth mentioning right now for the situation is the chocolate, which we can use directly to regain sanity. Yum. There are other items which do the same or other effects for sanity. This is just one example for these. So let's get back there and start exploring before I explain the rest of these things. You see, there are question marks on the map and when I'm right clicking, I can zoom around. Mouse wheel zooms out. You get the idea. Down here, we see some islanders. There's always one faction, at least one faction of tribal people on the island. And these question marks, they are places to explore. Keep in mind that while you're exploring, it's not a wise choice to go step by step, because as you see here, the first step costs six, that's five sanity plus one, and then seven and so on and so forth. There is a base cost while moving, what I'm trying to say. So every time you start moving, you need to invest five sanity. So you should plan your moves ahead. So we're going here, one left click for the route and another rift uh, and then we can go for travel to get going as you see here we're now exploring more things but what is my what i'm up here to so the goal of this care of this expedition is to find stone circles on this map so we have this little gidget which starts spinning as soon as we get closer to these stone circles there are several different object objectives for the islands be that the discovery of a certain ruin or the discovery of a certain monster this is always different and there's always some kind of objective on your expedition always so here we discovered our first um adventure tile we have a pirate shipwreck we can approach that and now we get into a little adventure area so we noticed that there are skeletons as we as you see here the uh gameplay features some fantasy elements which i really ap appreciate and as you see, there are different things we can do with these skeletons. We can trade with them, we can ask them to join our expedition, or we can try and ask for a treasure map. Let's ask for the treasure map, because these guys are skeleton pirates. Why not? So, okay. They will offer me their map, but it would not come for free. So here we see the trade menu. Wonderful. Trading is a basic functionality of the game, which we'll encounter to you several times. So you see here, this red meter shows how much we owe the skeleton party for buying the map. And as we add now things, the red meter 
moves and shifts. So see here, we don't really have too many things which we want to sell away. Why the heck are they interested in first aid kits? I don't know. Worth mentioning here is, as you see, there's a little um, there's a little gold coin left to the box which depicts the value of the items. So this is there is no clear depiction how much gold you owe them, but basically there is a gold value attached to this meter. So this is possibly something like 20 gold. Just measuring it here roughly, and yeah, with 20 gold, I would say it's 18 gold. But as, as you see, once we are over this threshold, these guys would trade with us. The real trick here is to learn to get it exactly into the middle point. When you trade with Islanders or other factions, you can also overpay to increase your standing with these people. So we're paying a few things, giving away the first aid kit, and we got us a pirate map. So, wonderful. Let's leave these guys for now because this is all that was worth showing. Oh well, let's go into the trade menu here. As you see, these guys are now would be now selling everything I I gave them. This works exactly like I mentioned before. Clicking here shifts this like that. And if you just offer something, you can also gift things. Only do this if you want to. Okay, we leave these guys. This was just one one adventure thing. And here the pirate treasure map now shows us where to look. And this is what this game is all about. There's so much to explore, so many little adventures to discover. And if you like that kind of gameplay, you will have a lot of fun with this game. So let's get over to the islanders here because this is always a very important uh, thing to do on this uh, on every island you should try to make your acquaintance with these people there's always a little bit of a difficulty or a story behind these we can now see that there's uh, a standing sorry my camera is just hidden hiding and here's the standing of these people standing zero and now we can ask them about their tribe i would personally recommend you to ask them about their village if you can because they will then give you a location of that thing and well, let's put the camera like that the now we know where the islanders village is located at and you can use this place as a guaranteed spot to rest, to trade, and that's why I personally think it's quite cool to ask away, especially if you're new to the game. Okay, let's get over to this place and see what we can discover. So we found a shrine. Shrines are, well, something you will encounter quite often on these islands. Shrines are, well, kind of like a default event here. So, you can enter these shrines, and now you can either search for secrets or enter the altar chamber. Here we have our first challenge. That's another gameplay mechanic which I definitely want to explain. You will see these more often, and as you see here, these are dice, and these are the required um, things. So we see we need to roll one dice with the green side, at least to finish this uh, to succeed at this challenge and there's even a bonus if we get to if we reach if we had if we manage to get um two grain dice so as you see here the dice have all several sides so this one has 33 percent to be green 33% to be blue and 33% to be invalid uh, and there you see these are by the way the skills of your people in the expedition and also we gained another dice for the machete because it feed, it gives you a, another green dice so basically the more good equipment and the more people you have on your expedition, the more dice you get and the more chances you have to succeed at these challenges. Also, as you see here, there's also the option to use a green elixir. My, my expedition only has a red one. And well, you, you see, this one it would add a dice which has six green sides, so basically a guaranteed success. Another thing which we can do is add a torch which is basically acting like the potion because, you know, searching with torch is a smart idea. 
So since my caravan is pretty good, uh, or caravan, my expedition is really good, in general, let's just do the roll as it is. And here you see, we were lucky. We got both successes, better loot, and now we found some writings. And I gained, my character gained some buff, which is again hidden beyond, behind the camera, I'm sorry. Here, blessing of healing is what we got. So, in this scenario, we got some blessing out of the search action. Often you find extra loot, but now you know how skill checks work in this game. This is always the same. You have to reach a certain dice check, and you have different dice to do that. Always in, in these uh, things is also the altar cham chamber, where you can investigate the altar. And this is your main source of treasures. These shrines are hold sacred to the islanders, though, and plundering them will make them angry. As you see here, these items not only have a gold rating, but also a fame rating. These items, when you bring them back home, will make you more famous. Basically something like a high score for your, for your expedition. So I'm going to pick these up, and as you see here, the standing decreases, and, well, the people of this land had vanished without a trace, so... Sometimes there's uh, more massive uh, consequences of plundering these shrines. Do that at your own volition and be careful with what you're doing. <laughs> you will have to live with the consequences. So, the last thing I want to show you in the expedition mode is combat. And as you see here, now this uh, thingy here is spinning like crazy because we're getting close to our first stone circle, for which we need for the mission succe uh, succession. So. We get to study these stones. Since this is only an objective, we get some story behind that, but nothing beyond that. And you see here, there's this red radius. This is showing us that we're getting closer to an enemy. We're getting a warning about low sanity. Thank you. So we can just click these and you see we regain sanity. Use these as much as you need them as and, and as little as possible because Resting somewhere is always more efficient than eating chocolate. Okay, so we're going to try to get close to this monster. And I'm doing this step by step to show you that once you are in the red circle of an enemy, you can attack him. Once you are in the red circle of an enemy, he can also ambush you. So that's why you, you have to carefully position yourself. Move to many grids inside the danger zone of the enemy and you risk an ambush. Move very carefully, but burn lots of stamina in consequence. This is what, this is basically the mini game behind that. So let's attack the giant centipede and I'm going to introduce you to you the combat system of this game. I really like how combat is handled here because it's pretty unique. And fun. So we have here a giant centipede as an enemy. We see down here are the dice of my team. Every single icon here is featuring a skill. And you might have already uh, thought it. We're going to roll here and whatever we roll are actions which we can use this turn. So as you see, not exactly the best options. There's always one free reroll per turn. So we reroll that thing, confirm that, and as you see here, now we got some new stuff. You can always reroll every dice. It just automatically picks up all invalid dice to reroll them, but you can also reroll at skills which you don't like to use. So over here, there's uh, also a vigor tonic which you can use to add up a red dice. Sadly we don't have any red attacks so this is pretty useless in this uh, turn and there's also the option to use a torch. So a torch acts like a own skill but we're going to cover that in a minute. So when you see here the enemy over there the red bar are, is the HP once it reaches zero it dies. Goes without saying I guess but 
What's important, you see the next action of the enemy. There's Poison Spit and Mandible Strike. These are the two actions this creature will do. So it will poison somebody and will, and will attack somebody for 20, just to give you an option to prepare yourself. Because, for example, we have a skill here which grants us a shield. So this would absorb 8 damage of this Mandible Strike. So let's do that. And you see here now we have this block value. Over there, we we need to hurt this thing though somehow. So now we see that we have the machete hack as a skill, and you see also that there's a boost option. So we select that thing, and now there's a green slot open which we can put in here. And for every dice you put into the boost slots, you get this down here. So basically we upgraded the damage of this attack by five by boosting it. So let's do this. And well, we can now either go for the end of the turn or we can go and use a torch. This will expire this item, which is quite uh, costly, but we're going to toss it over because I want to show you condition effects too. So this thing is now burning, and down in the left corner you see the effects of those. So the monster is now burning and will receive 5 damage per turn. This is reduced by 1 each turn. So there's a couple of different conditions in this game. They all work differently. Well. It's all in the tooltips though to know what's up there. So if you are feeling like you are not able to take down the enemy, you can also flee. But we're not going to flee here. So you see the, uh, the tonic remains here. So if you are not using it immediately, you can keep it. And well, beyond that, it's pretty simple. But it's also pretty unique how you fight in this game. You see, not every skill can be um, buffed. You see here the, uh, the the duplication of dice can't be buffed. This is just a basic skill. And the f enemy flanking skill can't be buffed in any way. So as you see here, we have a vulnerability skill. We might want to use that before attacking. So the enemy will take more damage for every person of vulnerability. And then we're going for another weak punch and upgrade that. So, this is how combat works in this game, and I really, really like the dice-based combat system because it make, gives a very, very unique feel to this game. Also important to mention, the wounds of your people will carry over after the fight, and they will slowly heal up while you're traveling. Okay, so I think we covered up the expedition mode well enough. When you get back home, you will transmute all the treasures you had in your inventory to fame and glory, which you can spend then in the town, which I will show you in a second. Alright, so here we are in Paris. Um, this is a little bit of a more experienced uh, game save file. The one we had before was just a pure start. And here in Paris, we can select our next expedition if we want to. You see here the uh, goal of the expedition, the rewards, these tickets are, well, basically the currency for permanent buff, or permanent things out of the, which you can buy in the town. And as I mentioned before, the fame here is overall, well, basically your score, which determines a couple of things in the, in the high score ranking, but overall... There we go. Total campaign fame is 628. The more fame you gain, the more tickets you also gain. So it's always good to aim for as much fame as possible. Basically, basically your, your goal is to haul as many treasures out of these expeditions as possible while not blowing yourself up. Because the more... Gaining treasures is dangerous, it disgruntles the locals, you have to fight for it, you have to spend resources, and inventory man uh, uh, slots are also um, limited. But you also gain experience during your expeditions, and you see this guy is already level 4, here we have a level 3 character, they level up, and they always every character in your expedition has a base si set of dice and equipment slots, traits which they uh, which will only be applied to the leader of the expedition as you see here 
the traits there on the other people are only negative ones, call it quirks, and they also have a loyalty rating, which can be influenced by, well, events, basically. Also, failing, uh, failing skill checks can decrease loyalty. There's a couple of things, and basically, once the loyalty is gone, the person is also gone. So... This is all pretty simple and easy. If you don't like people, you can also dismiss them. And it's also, last but not least, mention worth mentioning that everybody brings a own passive skill. So the field nurse increases your healing speed. The translator gives you more sanity when you rest in villages per night, and so on and so forth. I really like these uh, things because they, they are quite valuable and they do mean something. Okay, so what's next is... Here in Paris, we have also three factions which we can work for. The Lux Labs, the Royal Avalon Society, and the Tai Chi Academy. These guys, well, whenever you succeed at a expedition, you gain experience points for these dudes. And this is, uh, well, kind of like a roguelite aspect, because the rank of the Royal Avalon Society which I gained in this campaign carried over to the other campaign. You only have to be sure you have level ups for the campaign mode and for the director mode, which is basically kind of like, well, call it an endless mode for this game in simplified words. But more important, as you see here, we can recruit characters from here. We can buy equipable items and we can unlock items in the ship shop. The ship shop I will introduce in a second. So what this means, the more fame you gain for these factions, the more things you will unlock and you will then be able to buy new stuff there. So here at the Lux Labs, this uh, I haven't worked for them with uh, at all yet. So you see all these things are unlocked at different club ranks. So this is a long-term goal, if you might want to say so, for your expeditions. Last but not least, you, will, you can also spend your tickets at the Shady Dealer, who's your local friend for getting rid of your tickets for cool equipment items. Keep in mind, treasures go away after the expedition. Equipment items are allowed to be kept after the expedition, so if you find any of these on the road, just equip them, your people can keep them or buy, you can also buy them from traders or whatnot. So this is pre pretty much all. There's uh, last but not least the uh, the tavern where you can recruit people or trade your tickets for a more budget. Budget is the amount of money you have available for your next expedition. And you can also change the difficulties if you want, if you're feeling like it's too easy or too hard for you. And, of course, to recruit people, you will need uh, to have slots open in your in your expedition. I have already no slots open. So you see here, there's a lot of people to recruit. Okay, we're almost done. I'm just going to show you how the expedition preparations are working. So we're going to select the sponsor now when we start a expedition, which basically uh, tells us who we're working for in this scenario. And to stay with our buddies here, there's always one event in the tavern before you start, where often you get a offer to a skill check. We have a lot of red dice, let's try that. We did that, and we gained a little bit of budget for the next expedition due to that. I could try it one more time, but well, no, no thanks. It's up to you. It's always random what happens before your next expedition, so... We're going to wrap this tutorial now up with the buying of provisions. So when you go over here, you see there's your budget and there's the stuff you can buy for your caravan or your expedition. I don't know why I keep calling them caravan. So when you're supplying your people, try to have a couple of shovels and torches, of course. Medicine is up to you. Climbing gear is pretty cool because it makes it easier to climb or, uh, up to plateaus. But most importantly, you need to bring food for your expeditions. And there's always different sorts of food. I already unlocked tea, which, ha which reduces the travel start costs. So there's a lot of uh, different things. Whiskey has a backfire chance. 
granola bars need a sanity of 100 or lower so there's a lot of different uh, things to go for animal scent to sneak past those things this game has so many different items it's really a pleasure to play it longer and unlock all these things so you see there these are the potions you can cover up weaknesses of your team with those and yeah that's pretty much how you play curious expedition i hope that was kind of helpful for you feel free to drop your comments down below if there are any questions open feel free to ask away i really like to answer those also consider leaving a thumbs up on that video if you found it helpful it helps other people to find this content in the algorithm and last but not least check out my channel i do daily content you might want to subscribe and turn on those notifications to not miss anything there and last but not least in the text box down there you will find my twitch channel where i do daily streams so you might want to hang out there too and last but not least, I want to point down there to the support links, well, Patreon and whatnot. If you might want to check them out, I'd be super grateful. If not, let me thank you one more time for watching this video. And I wish you a wonderful day. See you soon. Bye-bye.